All right, guys, good morning. So they still got us pouring every day, even though it's cold, the snow on the ground. They've, these guys been trying to keep these things covered and keep the frost out of them. It's been a struggle. This one here is just borderline. It's they got it cleaned off yesterday, but it's uh, it's cold out. So we're gonna we're gonna get this one done today. We got a bunch more scheduled. I don't know how many more we're gonna end up getting done, but uh, we're gonna keep plugging away as long as we can. Hey everybody, welcome. My name's Mike Day, and I, my channel's all about concrete, guys. And just so happens the time of year we're pouring now is very, very cold. And we're struggling, you know, when I talk about struggling, we're struggling with temperatures below freezing pretty much on a daily basis and still trying to get all these jobs done. So this one was covered with blankets and some plastic. It did snow two days ago. You can see the snow in the background. And the builder came and he cleaned it off the day before, which was, you know, yesterday really if you're looking at the day before we poured here and then pulled the blankets off early this morning and it was so cold that the dirt was even crusting over a little bit even from just being pulled off early this morning so we're just running some really hot water that that water is 160 degrees that Darren was spraying and just trying to take out a little bit of whatever little tiny bit of snow and ice was left on the surface and then the concrete temperature is about 80 degrees so you know if that sits on it for a minute or two that helps that helps melt any little bit of you know pieces that were left over and didn't get thrown out so we've done this over and over again for years and years and years here in Maine you know pouring this time of year so we we don't pour on frost when the grounds frozen we don't pour on it if it's just crusted over like a, a quarter of an inch then we'll spray some water on it like that and it takes it right out and then if we do miss a small little piece the the warm concrete will melt that much you know pretty much unthaw it really quick and then we can get it get the floor poured without any problems and then when we get done you know on a day like today when we get done power troweling we'll get it back covered with blankets get it all buttoned up so it cures out really really good we got the driver helping us here today like i said um, how many of you guys have drivers that are just willing to jump right in and help out no matter what you know if you do if you guys pour concrete and you got some pretty cool drivers like that give them a shout out down in the comments this Brian right here is running the shoot he was he was grabbing a come along a rake earlier and he was kind of raking so I'll shout out to Brian uh, Matt is the guy driving the truck and Matt's a great guy too we're lucky we got about you know there's about eight or nine drivers at this company and they're all really really good guys they'll all jump right in and help no matter what they'll wash our tools anything just to help the job go a little bit quicker so feel free to give your your favorite driver or if you got drivers that you like down in the comments give them a shout out down there so we got that first truck dumped out he went well over halfway that was all planned because we got that breezeway up there in the back so the second truck's gonna finish the garage and then do the breezeway part and this stuff what we noticed was he this is the first truck out usually the first truck out of the plant each morning sets up quicker than any of the other ones the the aggregate the stone the sand they all sit in the bins which is which is in the garage so they get warmed so this aggregate and stuff is all warm and then you add the 160 degree water on top of it and the first load really really sets up fast so we're noticing just as we're walking in this stuff that is setting up so we got to get it screeded down real quick if we give it too much time then we'll just have a struggle just getting it screeded so and with three of us you know we don't we don't like to struggle screed and put it that way at least I don't anymore the second truck isn't quite so bad you know the the material temperatures are a little cooler on the second truck so we don't usually have have to worry about that Now we're, we're going to get, we decided instead of screeding all three bays just straight out, that we'd shorten this bay up a little bit. This is what we mean by shortening it. We'll just shorten it up and then we'll turn it and screed it right out. 
That way we don't have to have a really short bay in between with a 14 foot rod. So we shorten, this is what we're doing. We're just shorten it up down closer to the, the wall here right in front. We got the, um, a pad magnet on the wall to a chalk line that I'm going by. I'm the guy on the right, Darren's on the left, and Luke's the one doing the raking. And then we can, as soon as we can reach with the 14 over to that other pad, we can turn it like we're doing right now. And I slowed this down into real time so you guys could see that, that I mean, that concrete's not moving any, any too fast. It's not too loose. Stiffened up quite a bit from when we were dumping it out of the chute. But it's screened down pretty good. We caught it just in time so we didn't have to struggle with it too bad. And then you'll see right here as I start to run the bull float over it. Usually, you know, when it's not setting up too fast, you can go down and back once with the bull float and you're good. Don't have to keep going over it. This one here, as you watch this pass, you can see I come down and back. And it's not bull floated quite as smooth as what we like. It hasn't closed up everything, so we got to go over it twice. And then once we go over it twice, it closes up pretty good. And that's how we like to have it before we power trial. We like to have it closed up and, and pretty smooth. So the second truck, the second truck, you can see the slump right there. We got high range water reducer in here. Plus it's a 4,000 PSI. Um, so we can pour it pretty loose. He got his load just a little looser than the first truck, which which isn't that big a deal. But again, he's not going to set up quite as quick. The, the Those door openings, they're about a foot thick too for those garage doors, so they got the drops in there. They got them pretty deep. So we'll dump out, you know, we'll dump out seven eighths of this, nine tenths of this, and then we'll get this front part screeded, and then we're going to jump up into that breezeway back there here in a minute, I'm going to show you. I wanted to show you this real quick. When we screed by hand, you know, what Luke is looking at, he's looking to his, his left right there, but what he's really looking at is that line on the end of the screed. See how he's kind of leaving a line in the previously screeded spot? That's telling him that he's scoring. We call that scoring. And he's looking to leave that line consistently all the way down the part he's screeding. And I'm doing the same thing over there. That tells us that we're really right dead on. We're flat with the other part of the floor that's already screeded. And we know we don't have any humps, any dips. We can tell if we dig in too deep just because we've done it so much. But you can also tell if you don't leave that line, then you haven't scored and you've got a little hump in the floor. So... His head's turned to his left, mine's kind of turned to my right, and we're just checking. We check every once in a while, make sure we're filling in our footprints. But that's how we know when we screed by hand that we got a really nice uh, flat surface there that we're going by. We got a little bit too much mud in there. We're kind of picking it up and putting it into the breezeway. There, garage is done. Creek setting up really fast. Got really hot water, a lot of cow in it today, just to get it to cure. So we'll get this breezeway done here. It'll only take a couple more minutes. It's going to set up pretty good. We can already tell by just how it feels. Even though it's really cold today, it's, it's about 25 degrees out right now, Fahrenheit, so it's below freezing. And it just barely got up above freezing today. It got into the 30s, so plus with the sun coming up, you can see it in the background. The sun coming up helps warm it a little bit too, so that's gonna help with the finishing process. The breezeway here is about 14 by 10. There's a lot of you know buildings in Maine that have the garage with a breezeway like this connected uh, with a frost wall, which is just what these are. These walls go down into the ground about four feet, and they just keep everything from moving. The ground doesn't usually freeze any lower than four feet in Maine, so that's about as deep as a frost wall needs to be. We're just, Luke and I are both screened right off top of a wall. They're gonna match us. They'll probably end up putting some type of flooring over the breezeway floor, some, you know, tile or something. They, If they tell us they're gonna leave it concrete, then they'll usually tell us in advance. We'll finish this smooth. We'll just probably give the breezeway like a hand trial finish. 
and we'll definitely power trial finish the garage. Well, again, guys, you know, thanks for watching. Give your driver a shout out. Let's let's make sure we mention those guys. Um, they're like family to us. We count on them. You know, without them, we couldn't do what we do. They're great guys. They they work really hard. We need more guys that want to drive concrete trucks. We definitely don't have enough of them. Those guys need to be paid more. They they do a really good job. And uh, thanks for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.